This is the PlayStation F Free Division of PSGL. I am your host, Attack Alone, and I'm joined by T-Dub. We are in the Netherlands, Zandvoort, tonight. How is uh, Zandvoort for you, uh, Mr. T-Dub? It's an interesting one, isn't it? It was off the calendar for a long, long time, wasn't it? Ended up, uh, I think it was yes. 1985 to 2021, and then we saw it come back. We've had some... Uh, some mixed races, I think is the best way of putting it. But uh, the track, it is a bit more of a driver's track than some of the other ones. And you can get into a really nice flow and a rhythm. Absolutely, of course. It's a very fun track to drive. But of course, it is uh, very difficult for overtaking. As you can see here, we could be getting illegal blocking penalties, uh, it seems. And, you know, we don't want that. So Everyone's piled out of the pits very early, by the way. Is it going to rain? It doesn't look like it. Oh, we're going to get penalties soon. Watch you. You watch. You watch. Um, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We fingers crossed. We do. No, fingers crossed. We don't. Thank you. Uh, as you can see, we've got 18 drivers tonight. Uh, let's just catch up while they are going out of the pits. Uh, last week's results. Uh, it was originally Lifeboat that won barely, but he's lost that due to cutting the pit lane entry and was confined to fourth place. Angelo, who won by a uh, third place by a thousand of a second provisionally, was also given a five second penalty for his collision in Yasser Saki. And he finishes an eighth. So that means Lifeboat still leads the championship. And Giovanni, Luca Passer, and Darth Fifer were your top three. So, how about we go on a lap with uh, Nico, shall we, T Dub? Yes, I think we should with the Sauber coming around the final corner. We do just need to mention something, though. There is a big name missing, and that is Giovanno, who has been promoted to F2. Really? Yeah. Big, big change. Uh, but, uh, yeah, back on board with the Sauber. Been really nice through the first couple of corners, trying to get through the banking of turn number three, and it's very nice and tidy going through the kinks of four, five, and six as we go through the first set of split time. We obviously don't have anything to compare it to, but it is a 23.8. We can see maybe later on in the session how much time is found. Bit of traffic there with Mercedes getting out of the way. This is a lovely corner, I have to say. Turn number eight oh, yes. flows into nine really well as well. Trying to avoid that curve because it will throw you into the barriers on the inside or the outside. Swing it through turn number 10. And then on to the first of the two very small, or this one's very small, is DRS Straits. And it's been a, a pretty clean lap so far into the chicane of 11 and 12. Massive sausage curb on the inside there. For this game, at least, the uh, curb on the inside has been significantly reduced in size. This curb on the inside you also can't touch because that will throw you either into the gravel or into the wall. And going through the final bank corner, it's been a pretty nice lap from Nico, it has to be said. Yes, he's coming to the line now, and it is a 108-198. That is the bar which has been set by the uh, kick driver. Now it's going to be down to Lifeboat. This will be their final season there in Alfa Romeo Carlos before they go to the kick green and black. And there's Lifeboat going to 108 no, no, for Four thousand of a second. These from the championship leader, very close margin. And Tiago goes in the third, 108-5. And Tycho getting there by two hundredths. But Enzo immediately blows that away with a 108-012. Next should be uh, Lorenzino. He crossed the line in six in the server. Then it's on to, sorry, Alan Marciano. He managed to get six, just a few pounds behind Tiago. And I believe we've got other drivers crossing the line. Is Yasser Saki he goes into ninth. The last of all those drivers that set a line. Angelo goes up to fifth. Sorry, I'm flashing through trying to find drivers as there's a yellow flag. I think that's where the driver's slowing down. Dorf FIFA in eighth. He's in the Alpha Tauri tonight, which will be ugh, RB next year. Gosh. I think we'll just refer them to uh, RB Light next season or the Visa mm -hmm. team. We could say that. I mean, we can say Visa, right? It's, uh, it's a thing you get into a country with. Not the credit card. I mean, yeah, used to be called. We have to be. Uh, we have to be a little bit careful. A couple of things just to update people on. Owen made a mistake going through turn number nine, so he backed out, and then there was an invalidation for Coolman as well. So that McLaren, who has oh, struggled oh, recently yeah. in qualifying, it has to be said, also failing to set a banker time. Also, keep a watch of Jeslor. He's in the championship fight. Um, he is on fifty. Two points behind Lifeboat, who's actually one point behind Brando. Yes, Brando is still leading this championship. In fact, uh, if you have two points, 
you can still win this championship if you get a win and the fastest lap. Probably never ever going to happen. But if you have two points, actually no, one point, and if you score 17 points, win and the fastest lap in each race, you will have 52 points, and with three wins, two life bouts, uh, no, it is two points. Um, you, if you have two points, you get 51 more. On count back, you win the championship. But that is highly unlikely to happen. Uh, so technically, the top 22 are still in this championship. Anyone with one point or below is out. And that's Sasha, Nardo, Tato, Asim, Spizer, Christian Block and Nick. Uh, four of these have left this season. Everything to play for then. Everything Somewhat. still up in the air. Zane also failing to get a, a bank of time and made a mistake in the first sector. So is going again, I believe, in that Red Bull. So, Gessler making his way around. He's backed off, it seems. So lots of drivers been backing off. Um, if I check the tire data, that could be a good cue. Doesn't seem Very like close anyone's at the minute, though. Very close. Top eight covered by just a quarter of a second. I'd expect that to close up even more with the likes of Zayn, Owen and Coolman. Yassis Aki as well with a 10.4 should be uh, considerably quicker on their second flight up as well. I'd be surprised if we don't see the entire field separated by potentially even just half a second. Absolutely, yes. Um, we've got 16 drivers on the board. Away oh, Zane's doors. facing the wrong way. Just got to oh. pick that one up. Going through turn number 10, second attempt, and another failure for the Red Bull. Spinning it around 180 degrees, and that is that set of tyres. Most likely ruined for the Red Bull. And expectations are high for him because he's in a Red Bull. Because, you know, for stopping. And in the championship fight, you have to uh, have to talk about Zane. Only 11 oh, points yes. off the back of Lifebout in fourth place. Completely forgot about him. Sorry, Zane. Cool man can get in the championship fight if he wins tonight or gets a second place even. And the top drivers have an absolutely horrendous night. And I don't want to like curse anyone, but you know. Oh, his... Nico's off. Nico, oh, Nico off going through off. turn number three. Yeah, lost it on the exit. No uh, serious damage, but uh, yeah, we'll have to bail out of that one. Just been bumped down into fifth place by Lifebout in that has going into P3, I believe. Lifeboat making his way out of the banked turn four, uh, turn three, but I, I call it turn four. I call it a little kink. That's turn one and a half, turn two, as he gets through, sits, I think that's a purple sector from Lifeboat before coming through the middle sector now. This is where the corners can get quite tricky. That corner, I remember in a set of course, so I think a car nearly flipped when they did the mod of it. Oh, that's a mistake from Lifeboat. But he's still going, it's still validated, but I don't think... Yeah, he's half a second down, not at the end of his lap, I'm sure. He's not Absolutely. going to find any improvement, but he's still going. I think he might be going again, but I highly doubt he will. But that's the last thing he wanted, so he will likely stay in third place for now. Tycho on a lap as well, yeah, and life it comes to the pits lanes. And Enzo trying to improve on his pole time right now in the Ferrari. We are signing Lewis Hamilton next season. I know we have to keep saying it, okay? We know you're annoyed, but it's happening. Uh, Tycho in the Williams is making his way through and on a 108 173. He's trying to improve as his teammate, Tiago, goes into 200 ahead of his teammate. Tycho is though much faster and Enzo improves to a 912. Fantastic time. Tico will go into second here for sure. He does by just under a second, point zero, a uh, tenth of a second, sorry, point zero eight four seconds ahead of his teammate. So once again, nine minutes to go. And Coleman, the only driver not to set a lap, he's still in the pits. Yeah, interesting. Probably waiting right until the end of the session. Angelo's have gone purple in the middle sector. A couple of lap times to update you on as well. Lorenzino jumping up just inside the top 10. Yassi Saki and both getting representative times in as well. But as Angelo comes around the penultimate corner and through the banking, this could be challenging his teammate up in first place. Currently on a 108.2. Should be challenging maybe the high sevens. Oh. Yes, 107.9. And it is 28 milliseconds between the two Scooter rear cars. It's like 2004 again. Ferrari and Williams Especially in the top Williams. four. Yeah, yeah Williams, the remember when they were actually Bobby good? Golden. Remember when Williams were actually good? Or I can't say Haas, because there were no team that uh, preceded Haas 
at all. Luca Rapassa, Luca Rapassa, purple middle sector, by the way, three tenths up at the moment, could also be challenging in this uh, 2003-04 retro uh, championship. I think we've got an Alpine off, though, in the first <laughs> sector. We do, and I believe that is Sen going slow. As we look at Luca Rapassa, who's three tenths up on his time, and it's a fourth best time, 108-106 from Luca Rapassa, splits the two, Williams. You know that retro championship prediction? Let's just pretend that's Kimi Raikkonen having a bad day like he did in Bahrain 2006. Yet he still finished third place. He had a horrible qualifying session, started in dead last, and got third place. And I don't think anyone talks about it. They just talk the start of the season being a, the return form from Michael Schumacher finishing second and Alonso just getting a routine victory, albeit barely. Had a big rear wing fader thing here qualifying, didn't he, old kid? He did. And I remember, I think, what the heck happened there? And then he got a third place. Uh, people tend to forget these races. And just Zane remember... finding time. Zane finding time, by the way. Another drive to go purple in the middle sector without Ten a representative seconds. time. Made two mistakes. Yeah, on a 20.0. Oh, but in dates you... over that massive curb. We don't believe in commentators' curse, guys. It's just very unfortunate and coincidental. Come on, on a lap now. I think Lifebout's going again as well in P6. Ferrari gets out of the way. Cool man, like you said, trying to get a lap time in. But uh, yeah, difficult so far for Cool Man. I said it earlier in the session, but uh, qualifying seems to be his kryptonite at the moment. <coughs> having to make up places in the race. Got a Ferrari in the way, potentially. Yeah, but he gets out the way just in the nick of time. Cool man now making his way around the middle sector, going through those uh, orange and white rumble strips to uh, show support for Donald. I mean the Netherlands. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, uh, going away from satire. Cool man now heading towards the grand stands. This game reminds me of the Hockenheim Stadium section, in all honesty. The way it's laid it out. It's fantastic. A very nice retro feel as well. Bring back Hockenheim to the F1 game, please. Oh, a slide by Coleman. Saves it, though. Great save from the NLR driver. And he's going to come across the line, and it's only 15th. So I guess that slide really did cost him for yeah, uh, only, a bit uh, of time. Only three tenths of his teammate, but uh, yeah, 11 places further back. Shows you how close everybody is together. Coleman, uh, not Coleman, Lifebout did go again, but was three tenths down after the first couple of sectors, so returned to the pits sharpish. So, we continue on, and there are five minutes to go, and lots of the drivers are in the pits. We have Kaya coming across the line to improve their time, but only manage. Three finds it by his teammate. This Mercedes is worse than the real one. Yeah, it really isn't great. Mercedes last in the Constructors' Championship as well. Really, really struggling. Lorenzino is uh, finding a tiny bit of time. Currently 11th is uh, 12 milliseconds up on their fastest time. So this shouldn't be a dramatic improvement from 11th place at just outside the top 10. We need a pretty mega final couple of corners. Yes, absolutely. We should just mention, by the way... Um... Pitting as well. Yes. Mentioned that the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari at the top of 104 wins to their name. Four. Four is a lot. That is a lot. And um, in second place, if no wins, it's 79 points, is Alpine. And third with two wins, but uh, not many. Only no other podiums and a lot of uh, low points finishes. It is... Pass for 64. Lifeboat pretty much carrying the team. No offence to his teammates, Ewan and Owen. And Zane and Alan Marciano of the Red Bull on 60 points. Fourth. Just got to uh, quickly say, Enzo has smashed the benchmark time, gone even quicker into the 7-7s. Oh seven yeah, nearly two tenths qu uh, clear of it. Angelo now. Yeah, so a uh, big task Jeez. for everybody else now to catch up to that lead Ferrari. To be fair, um, we had uh, the lap of the gods was missed by the Monaco cameras, and considering it's Monaco, what a surprise. We cut to Lance Stroll instead. What has happened? We need to know. Well, we need to know because uh, I missed it. Now I'm having to think of the, what uh, Martin Fitzmaurice said once when a streaker got onto the dart stage. 
at the lake side. And, uh, <laughs> was it was it all one it happened and the uh, crazy lady went on the stage and uh, you know, was obviously taken off by security and the guy was like <clears throat> The lady concerned is going to be heavily fined. Only people wearing badges are allowed on the stage. Nice. Smooth, that one. Covered it and, nicely. And it was like, I don't know what you're all going crazy about. I missed it. <laughs> I just missed this lap. Basically streaking around the, the Dutch Grand Prix circuit like it was the beaches. Who's out of position then? Zane obviously in last on a 20 flat, yet to get a representative time. We've seen Coolman having issues as well. He's going to be one of the last drivers out Can of the pit. Can get another lap Enzo? Pardon? Can Enzo get another lap? He's got two minutes. He can easily Almost get out. It's very tight. Yeah, it is a short lap, so potentially he might want to save a set of tyres, though, for the race. Sem also down the order. Seven places behind teammate Jezlar in 14th. Struggled last week, Sem. Was... Uh, a real off day for that second Alpine driver. And uh, yeah, not able to rectify that so far, but still got another lap to try and get towards that sort of uh, top seven, really, which is where Sem's been residing for the majority of the season. So here we go. The final set of laps. And Nick is the first driver out. Lanzino also out there as well as Zane. And through the second sector now. Well, he always backed off. That's it for a long in your session. It seemed like he might have been impeded. Possibly not. I think he just had a bad corner and will be starting in no higher that oh sorry. Than sixteenth. Lauren Gino is coming through on his lap and makes a mess of it in the corner and that'll be it if it and we'll be getting a restart here because of legal blocking. Everyone stay in the lobby because it's quicker. Zane finding time, 10 seconds up again, although that's not going to mean too much at this stage. May get a little bit of traffic, though. We've seen it in real life, people struggling with traffic in the final sector. Remember Sebastian Vessel in 2021, was it, where he uh, got yeah. held by both Haas cars going through the bank of the final corner. This is important for Zane, under pressure to get this time in. It'll be the only lap that the Red Bull gets. Over the line, it doesn't look too competitive. No. It's only an 8.5 stays, slowest for the driver fourth in the championship. And he will be starting at the back, and Enzo is going to try... And up the ante again. Right, here he goes. Here goes uh, Enzo on his final lap. And I think, uh, is that Luca Rapasso who's backed out? Yeah, he's backed out. So Enzo is going to try to set the bar even higher, which is absolutely insane. He's got them across the line with 12 seconds left to go. So the final time's coming in. That's Tiago coming around so the third sector. We've got Darth Fifa crossing the line. He cannot get any higher in this grid that's jess jesslar going to fifth not what he would have wanted angelo improves but not enough oh so, tico's off tico's in the wall in the oh, final corner no. oh the disaster we can't show the picks unfortunately we got there too late tico goes off and was in fourth and won't be improving the fact his teammates crossed the line and bested him so he'll be starting no higher than fifth now we've got a Nico crossing the line, only goes up one spot. That's um, Isla Marciano crossing the line. He goes up to where Nico had that spot. Now, how about Nick? He's uh, got up to 13th, but that's not going to be enough. And Coolman has got up to 11th. And Lifeboat's the only guy beating. He's backed off, so I think this might be all over. Sam Enzo's going quicker. is not going quicker. 7 9 it just shows that he absolutely owns this Dutch Grand Prix Zandvoort circuit. That is pole position for Enzo. What a performance from the Ferrari driver. Miles ahead of everybody else. In Pierce jail standards, a quarter of a second almost. That is a lifetime. And if you take a quarter of a second from Angelo back, we'll uh, have a look at it in a moment when the results come up. But I think you're going to drive us outside of the top ten. That's how close everybody else is, but Enzo very much in a league of their own and hasn't really featured too much this season. Only made three starts, I believe, and one of them was a DNF. But there are your final results. Like you said, 
or like I said, quarter of a second ahead of Angelo. Further tenth back to Lifebat, so the Ferrari is very, very far ahead of everybody else. And then look how close it is behind. Lifebat ahead of the two Williams. Jeslar, Luca, Rapasso made a mess of their final lap. Ali Marciano, Nico, and Sem did find a time to get up into the top ten right at the death. Coolman will be a little bit disappointed in 11th ahead of Darth FIFA. Lorenzino and Nick. Yasir Saki will be disappointed, as will Owen, who made a mistake on their final lap. And it is Kaya and Zane, probably the biggest shock of qualifying last so what a performance. That was probably one of the most dominant qualifying performances that I have seen all season. And you know what? He deserves it. He was on fire throughout this session. And he got four laps in too. But he is going to get a, a fresh set of tyres because we're actually going to do a restart. So restart, do not leave, um, said our boss Lifeboat. Oh my. And we're going to be in for a treat. That is going to stay. That is the... Actual weather, we have to stick with that. This could be a long one, folks. This could be quite a long one. Heavy, heavy rain. That must be full wet conditions uh, yes. if we are going to keep that weather setting, which hopefully we do. Could be very, very interesting. Could throw a could throw everything up in the air because the dry pace and the wet pace for these drivers could be very different. Sure. Although you'd imagine... You'd imagine, though, that the setups won't be too different because this, of course, is a bit more of a high downforce circuit. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're just going to get uh, messing around here. So uh, please ignore everything you see on screen. Uh, this is just so we can get through the the game itself. I'm just going to go on to the... Uh, don't see anything, by the way. I'm just going to go through the uh, entire shebang of oh dear that's uh why we don't take this seriously here uh so <clears throat> we're just gonna get restarted and we'll be back in a few moments uh just stick around as we see drivers just messing around with their fake cars uh well they're fake cars anyway so uh well we should let everybody know about the sponsors there we go oh yeah we've got sponsors i forgot tell us about the sponsors and uh some reason he can't destroy his car. There he goes. GT Omega. You all know oh, who yes. they are. Massive brand in the motorsport gaming community. If you use the code PSGL at checkout, that will be a 5% discount. And furthermore, Sim Racing Center. If you want some help with setups, coaching, strategies, whatever, use that same code PSGL for 10% off their services. I mean, what a deal. What a deal indeed. So, uh... Skip that. Uh, as the capacity decides to defy gravity, so uh, we'll just wait a few minutes for the lobby to restart itself. And we've also did we mention Sim Racing Center? Yes, we did. Okay, good. I, well, I, I don't know why. Again if I, you want. Yeah, Brendan Lee. You can get lessons from podium finisher Brendan Lee. Uh, you get a real kick out of it. Get it? Kick because that's his team. Uh, but yeah, nice. uh, could be worse. Could be RB Lights. I'm calling them next this season, uh, or Visa. Uh, fun fact: Visa's original name was Bank AmeriCard. Fun fact: I don't know why they changed it to Visa. Of course, sometimes Visa is a a document you need to get into a country. Not we need. We need. A, we don't need a visa for many countries actually. Um, tourist visas, anyways. Um, should also that is mention. An interesting one. Yes, uh, and the original name of Mastercard was Master Charge. <laughs> of all things, uh, go watch How Credit Controls Your World by Ordinary Things. I'm sure, you can plug YouTube channels. Sure, sure, we can allow to plug Tom Scott, right? <laughs> what a guy! I think everyone here loves Tom Scott. You know, he stopped making turning, videos. Turning it down though, isn't he? Yeah, it sucks. I love that guy. Not because he was on Only Connect, but you know. <laughs> uh, uh, only Connect. How, how what can people... we expect, though? Sure. What can we expect from this wet race? Uh, people would be doing a race of attrition, pretty much. It is extremely tough, especially in banked corners. You can tell. That's why they don't race in NASCAR very much, um, because, you know, they've only got dry tyres, and the fact that the, on the banking is absolutely brutal for the cars. And it's going to be the same here for any car, really. 
yes, you're going to have all the grip, uh, but you're also going to have to keep it very careful through these corners. And uh, I only wish them the best of luck. It is going to be a huge challenge. And we're really going to see who's comfortable in these cars and around this configuration of circuit because uh, you know they don't drive in the rain too often and they won't have practiced too much in the rain but uh, obviously they would know uh, they would know about the weather conditions so uh, they would be a little bit dialed in and i would imagine some of them would have just tweaked their setup a tiny a tiny bit to accommodate these uh, weather conditions Yes, absolutely. So I'm just showing you what the settings are, as you can see. Everything is off. No line, even. You can't have the racing line. Uh, you're going on your own, basically, lined. Um, speaking to the limit, yeah, yeah, heavy rain. Thunderstorm would be cool. What if you get struck by lightning? Does that destroy your car? <laughs> Imagine. I'd I love there to, to be, see There that. needs to be a wind setting as well, so you can have, like, a... Well, maybe not a tornado, but these gale force winds coming in. Oh, God, don't remind me of that weekend in, in uh, Austin. In my opinion, they shouldn't have it Austin mm. in October or November. They should have it early in the season, but then again, you've got Japan as well. Mm. Maybe have Austin and uh, get rid of Miami and have Austin. No offense to Miami, but uh, I think there's a consensus. The, the jury on this one says that Austin should be in Miami's spot. Austin, then again, you've got tornadoes that time. So, yeah. Then we've also and had... to be fair, Suzuka has uh, had, has had a few typhoons over the years, hasn't it? Yeah, but that's because it was in October. Now it's in April. Mm. The weather and, of course, the Sakura surrounding the track is gorgeous. I'm glad they had Suzuka Japan. I hope they, in the summer, and I hope they continue to do that. And uh, I need to go one year because it's fantastic. The beautiful cherry blossom falling onto the circuit. Oh dear. It would, be, it would look like it would be covered in confetti by the end of it, which it usually is if you are in victory lane. It certainly mm -hmm. was for Max Verstappen. Anyway, no, no offence to Max Verstappen. It's done very well. It is still raining here at Zandvoort, uh, even though Michael Fish told me that it would be completely dry. Michael Fish was the legendary river caster that said there, uh, he was told there was going to be a hurricane in 1987. And he said, no, don't worry, there's not going to be a hurricane. Uh, even though he got reports from America. Uh, and it, there wasn't a hurricane. Uh, there was a hurricane. Uh, well, it wasn't a hurricane, but it was like a very strong tropical storm. And it wreaked havoc amongst the uh, summer south of England. Not as bad as some places in, like, say, America, but it was uh, quite the story back then, in 1987. I mean, this weather is uh, not quite the thunder and lightning that we were talking about earlier, but it definitely is uh, probably more suitable for boats rather than open-wheel cars. And if you are wanting a free shower. More suitable to be having oars rather than tyres. Yeah, uh, yeah. We try to have the boat race this year, and they had it in uh, very contaminated tins. Here we go. Then we have five lights coming up ahead of the drivers. That's a Ferrari front row, and it's lights out. And away we roll in Zandvoort. Yes, I said roll and not go. Here come the Ferraris. They'll be leaving, but already the other Ferrari car, powered car of Lifeboat, is making its way around the outside off the Ferrari and is going to take the second position very handsomely and that will help his championship conservation of his championship lead and there's already a yellow flag Kaya has had uh, no Nick has had a spin at the back now Tiago is going to go for Angelo's third place as we just show the tires all on full wet so I think we'll be turning that off we'll be showing you the positions climbed that is already a position gained, a crucial position gained, and Yasser Saki getting a yellow flag, ignoring five-second penalty already. That may be appealed, it may not be, but actually, no, it will have to be served. He has to pit. Uh, oh, he doesn't have to pit, but I'm sure he will be. There's massive 
twist happening in the mid pack. Lots of position changes happening as we go into the next corner. That is cool, man. Going on the inside of Nico. And now he's going for Alan Marciano. A very bold move from the McLaren driver. Nearly seemed to work, but he's got one position over Al Nico. Try to join his teammate inside the top eight. I have to say, though, Angelo is getting swamped by everyone. Is he coming into the pits? Yes. I thought I saw this at Dear. turn one. Angelo going into the side of his teammate Enzo down at the apex of turn number one of Tarzan. And it was absolutely what happened coming into the pits for a new front wing. So that is Angelo down at the back of the pack. Also, just a quick update on what happened with Nick Owen in the pits as well. We were four wide coming out of turn number one and into turn what two. Next? That was never going to work. And it was Nick that was the big loser. So everyone but Enzo is moving up positions, and that is Alan Marciano. And cool, man, we're having a battle through the hairpin, the banked hairpin, but it looks like they're remaining in the same positions for the meantime. Further back, it seems uh, they're trying to survive this seemingly race of attrition as Kaya and Zane start to close up on Sem, as Yasser Saki, who's already got a penalty, will be set back in a pit lane, ignoring a yellow flag gets you a five-second penalty, and they'll be behind... Nico right now, who's trying to get past Coleman, who's still trying to get past Marciano, who's lost time to a pass. No DRS, remember, so there'll be no help for Lifeboat. It's all on raw speed and skill for these drivers tonight. Uh, I do not believe, yeah, it's definitely not going to be DRS tonight. Uh, as you can see, the spree is massive coming through these corners. That is Zane. He's losing a lot of positions now. Has he got damage? He does. He's lost his front wing end plate as front of him there is battling happening between Darth Fifa and Lorenzino in the kick and Alpha Tauri cars respectively for and that's Sem corner cutting and gaining a place that means yeah. he is getting uh, a five second penalty and Lorenzino going on the inside of Sem as Zane has pitted and there's a yellow flag oh dear that's Nico, Nico and that's gone. a safety car uh, Nico has lost entire front wing, came at sliding out of turn one, and he's going to have to be coming into the pits to get a new wing. So a bad start for Angelo and a bad start for Nico. And Zane, too, who's just about to come up in the pit lane, will get some discount. But also Ewan, Ian Owen has uh, also further back as well. I don't know what happened to him. I think got caught up in that first lap skirmish. Just to update you on what we saw, what we saw the very end of going through turns 11 and 12, it was Sam Lorenzino and Darth Fifa got very, very messy into that chicane. Sam went straight across the gravel chicane. Lorenzino was off the road as well in that gravel trap. So, uh, yeah, both uh, getting a little bit messy out there, but uh, that is the reason that Sam picked up that penalty. Um, Cole Palmer in 30 minutes has already scored a hat trick against Everton. I am not kidding. I oh, am not even lying as well. Not even lying. So obviously this gives a chance for everyone to uh, reset, of course. Angelo giving the opportunity to catch up the back of the pack, which is very important for that second Ferrari driver that, after that little mistake into Tarzan. Same for Zane and Owen as well. I wonder if we're going to be heavy rain for the full race. A couple of drivers in the pits, by the way. Nico, of, of course, coming into the pits. And Yasir Saki as well in the Aston Martin. Oh, Everton scored, actually. I think. Um, against... Yasir Saki getting rid of that penalty. Oh, yes, he is. And that will uh, not be solving that problem, it seems. So, we move on. And the safety car will be lining every driver up. So the yes, Saki had a, a front wing change. I didn't see where the Aston Martin would have picked up damage. That could potentially be what happened between uh, Nico sending the uh, sending him into the barrier there. I'll have a look on the race director. And yes, there was a collision between Yasir Saki and Nico. So I wonder if Nico was given a little bit of a helping hand into the barrier on the exit of Tarzan. Yeah, and it's not. It's been disallowed, actually. They're still 3 you know, up, Chelsea. Back to you in the studio. Unbelievable, Jeff. So, uh, driver's going to be doing another lap behind the SC. And Aston Martin safety car. Yo, where's our Alpine safety cars at? 
where's our Honda safety cars at? Where's our... Hey, where's our... Where's our Ferrari safety cars? Surely it's got to be a Ferrari safety car somewhere. I mean, the Alpine safety car would be probably a bit too slow. Oh, you are sad. I don't know that, what. That is as fast the safety car can go, by the way. It's uh, quite a, a monstrous thing, though, that safety car. But, uh, of course, it is designed to go the same speed as F1 cars. Hmm. It's a good looking, uh, good looking safety car, though. It is. I do prefer it to the old... Uh, was it an SLS that they used to have? I think so. And they've still obviously got the Mercedes safety car as well, decked out in Ferrari red, which is a little bit ironic considering it is a Mercedes, I have to say. Just make sure you're joining us. This is the PSF3 stream here at Zanvort. We're on lap five. We're behind the safety car after an early instant. And we'll be going away momentarily. Should be the end of this lap. Ideally, it would be, yeah. Big movers, I have to say. We didn't quite catch it. Kaya's made up eight places from oh! their starting position inside the top ten lap. now. Inside the top 10 and eligible for points. Top 10 get points. So it'll be Enzo that'll be leading the field away now. He needs a good start, especially considering these conditions. So, can he get away quick enough from these pesky lifeboat, who is currently the championship leader and trying to preserve his championship lead, and he could if he gets past Enzo. When is he going to go? That is the question. Let's find out together, shall we? Let's see what happens. I don't think he's going to go around the banking. That could be a little bit treacherous. It's, wow, they really bunched up together, these drivers. Look how slow they're going. Oh, right, he's off. He's underway. We're back underway. It's lap 6 of 36, and they're all fighting in the wet. And it looks like that Tiago's got a good run on life by the championship leader. Coming into the corner, life out goes wide, and that will allow Tiago to go through. Now he's going to strike back, and somehow he hangs on, and he must have taken the wet line to hold his position. That is uh, quite the bold move. Oh, and Tiago's hit him in the back, and that's going to allow Tico to come through as well, but he doesn't, and Jeslor and Rapasso are going to pile up behind him and cause a massive uh, chain reaction of events, hopefully not, coming through the middle sector now. And Tiago still somehow hold on to his third place he initially had. Problems for Coolman as well. Dumped back from 8th down to 13th. Contact, I believe, with Kaya in the Mercedes and the McLaren coming off significantly worse. But yeah, oh. life back and Tiago. Oh, and that's, out. Out. that's a safety car. And we'll be going again. Uh, just half a lap of racing. And once again, we have to queue up behind an Aston Martin that we didn't even rent, so uh, come and get us, Aston. Angelo's made up a decent chunk of places up into 12th now, by the way. Mm -hmm. Nick leaving the session, not uh, overly surprising. Didn't quite see what happened, but it was going through the fast turn, uh, turn 8 or 9, I think it was. So maybe uh, taking a little bit too much curb and looping it round into one of those barriers that are pretty close on this circuit, especially in that section. Yeah, I do believe this track's quite inaccurate. There's not enough orange to go around in the stands. We have some takers to the pits. Kaya's coming in. Kaya, who Darth, made Darth up... Darth FIFA as well. 11... Sorry? Darth oh, Darth FIFA as well. As well. Right, I thought you were saying something about FIFA. I was just saying, no, it's called <laughs> FC24 now. Uh, Owen coming in as well, who hasn't really showed uh, much impression at Haas. Uh, it's all been about Lifeboat in that team. Lifeboat's been getting so much ground, but his teammate hasn't been able to replicate that and is still down there in plum last when he comes out of the pit lane. So it's still Enzo, Lifeboat, Tiago, and they'll be going at the same pace now under the safety car. 
once again. So nothing much really has changed with this safety car now. In fact, it hasn't changed from the very start. It's just uh, you know, giving us time to clear up before we get racing again, uh, as is customary in Formula 1 as a whole. Uh, but if you were like 20 seconds in the lead, it would ruin you. So, yeah, not the best uh, neutralizer for races. People would say the virtual safety car would be a fair choice. But then again, you also have the case of having discounted pit stops just because someone else can't keep their bottle. It is an interesting conundrum. What is also a conundrum is what the uh, strategy is for those guys that did come into the pits. There were no front wing changes, so it was a regulation stop. I wonder if they're thinking maybe with no more safety cars, they can try and stretch these tyres to the end because the wet the wet tyres don't wear as much as the uh, as the slick tyres would. Seven drivers have made a pit stop. Angelo, Zane, Nico, Yasisaki, Kaya, Darth Fifa, and then Owen has been into the pits twice, once for damage on the opening lap. It is possible to do a full race on these. In fact, Ocon did it in the real world on intermediates, and his tyres were absolutely yes. bald. I don't think he scored many points. Was that Turkey 21? That was Turkey 21. The one where uh, yeah. L uh, Max was, uh, no, Red Bull were in white cars for, uh, white and red, I should say, for Japan and Honda. I quite like that livery. I'll bring it back. They should have brought it back in Silverstone. Uh, should have brought it back Suzuka. at uh, Suzuka. Yes, Suzuka. If they're doing Silverstone, well, they've got to do their own colours because, you know, they are technically a British team despite having an Austrian licence. Yes, it's an interesting dynamic going on. Who else are the big movers, though, that we should look at? Obviously, Kai relinquished trap position coming into the pit, so it's now... Uh, it is Zane who's made up the most yeah. places in 12th. Has already pitted, of course, started last. Slightly, uh, surprisingly enough, up six places to 12th. Lorenzino also has made some decent moves up four, courtesy of a few pit stops around him, just nestled inside that top 10 with Angelo behind as well, making up some, uh, some decent ground after that first corner blunder. Yes, so uh, we should be getting underway again. There we go, safety car in this lap, and Enzo's going to lead us away for lap number nine of 36 we're just about completed one quarter of the race of course um you have to complete 90 percent of the race to be eligible for points or else they could have there's great... no timer here though yeah no yes. two hour time limit well it'd be one error because it's 50 percent mm. uh, i believe uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i do believe we've had races longer than one hour that have um gone the full distance so Enzo going to be bunching him up again. It seems he's going to do the same strategy as he did last time. And uh, look out. Look at the long line. You barely see it in the spray, but you're anxiously waiting to go. And when is he going to go? That's the question. He goes now, and he goes on the inside of the banking. Quite this good strategy there. They're going to get the most grip possible as we fight behind. It's the two Williams who are about to go side by side. No, he goes into the inside, and he's being challenged by Jeslar. He's covering the inside. Going side by side. Coleman and Angel are also going to battle as well into Tarzan. And now, oh my goodness me! Ty Tico nearly loses it, but stays it. And he's staying side by side. But Jesler gets position. He's still fighting them. This is a pretty dangerous way to go through fighting in the race. It's one of the most dangerous parts of the track to overtake. But Jesler holds him off and now in fourth place. Looker passer right behind Tico as well, so maybe losing another position, and he's going to go for it in the inside at sector two, and he's going to the outside now, and uh, I believe we have a spinner there, it's Kaya, and that is another mistake for Mercedes, and that is Rapasa still trying to push through into top five, but can't get past Tico, and Kaya has always spun it, he's out, and uh, he's retired from the race, Whilst moving the car, that is going to be a penalty. You cannot retire the car on track. That um, is against the rules. So he's going to get a penalty for that for sure. And now a uh, lifeboat is two seconds behind Enzo. Enzo, where is this pace coming from? He's well ahead. 
was well ahead in the dry, continues to be well ahead in the wet. Thankfully, no safety car picked up. Owen's been off the road as well in the middle sector, going, going through up. turn number seven and picks up a five-second pit lane speeding penalty. When it rains, it certainly pours and now retires from the session. Yeah, just got caught up on the curb coming through turns seven and eight, Oof. and that spat him out into the runoff area. We had that also further back in the midfield. Oh, do you want to look at Coleman? Yes, Coleman was trying to get past them for eighth place, who has a five-second penalty for... Uh, overtaking and gaining a position so it's only playing spoiler now for the drivers behind him including whoa that was a massive desync I saw for Coleman he looked like he was heading into the wall there but no he was uh, just making his move into the apex and that's Angelo past Lauren Zinho and this could be Zane as well making his way past the kick driver and he has done so so into 11th just on the fringe of the top 10 is Zane, the other TRT driver, in this race. And that is a oh, yes, spinner. Saki. Saki has spun at the chicane, uh, or sort of a chicane plus hairpin segment, I'd say. And Darth FIFA right behind Laurentino. And now Angelo is going to be right on the back of Coleman once again. And he needs these points to find a fight in the race. Oh, and uh, oh wait, Owen's already left sessions. That's fine. I thought it was a uh, lifeboat for some reason, but no, it's all good. It's just a retired driver, so nothing has been impeded here. So looks like Jeslar right into trouble with Tico. It seems three temps separating the two drivers, heading through the end of the first sector. Anglo now. Also up there trying to get closing up to Coleman, who's closing up to Sem. And that is a... Tico is losing a position there to Rapasa. That was in the middle of the second sector. And that was actually... Uh, I'm not sure if that was a move, but he seems to be really struggling, Tico. Tico losing his ground, and he might be losing ground to Alan Marciano as well, T-Dub. Certainly was a move, and it was a beautiful one from that lead McLaren getting up into the top five, just sending it up the inside of turn number seven and getting up into fifth place. Now can chase after the group in front. Life out nearly three seconds off the back of Enzo now. Coolman and Anjo continuing to get stuck in, and that's a big wobble for Tico going Both through wobbled. turn number 12. Could be losing a place for uh, Ale Marciano having a look at the inside of 13. Thinks better of it, though. Thinks better of it, and now he's going to have a run for sixth place. Now, is he uses his battery? That is Tico defending for his life, going to the inside. And it may have helped him here, or has it? No, it might have hindered. Challenge from Alan Marciano on the inside at Tarzan. Oh, but he can't do it. Uh, sorry, I had to get that out. That's the only time I mentioned it. Angelo Wright with Coleman. He is past Coleman. And now he's defending position with what he's got. And behind him as well, Nico and Zane. And that's Alan Marciano, who's lost it. He's losing positions. Now, what's happened here? Now, has he had a collision with uh, Sam or Tico? I, I can't remember what's happened to him. And now he's always oh, way off the again, track there. Yeah. He's collision with Nico. I know he's fallen right to the back. He's in 14th. He's got no damage, it seems. He's losing a lot of ground. Losing a lot of momentum as well. That's Coleman. Coleman now struggling. Coleman's lost two positions. Now he's diving into the inside of Nico. It's all kicking off in the back. And it's all going wrong for Coleman. He's losing a lot of grip. And these are tires that are supposed to last the whole race. And I don't know what's going on with him. And there's a yellow flag. Now, who Jesler's is that? Jesler's off. off. That's bad news for his championship strike. And he's absolutely struggling. And he actually hits Dorf FIFA. Gives the Dorf FIFA a tap coming through. And now Alan Marciano behind him is thinking, hey, come on, let me through as well. Now, Angelo's right behind Sem. He's got the more superior pace. And surely he's going to get through. And Coleman actually getting a yellow flag. Oh, Rapasso, what's happened to Rapasso? No, he's pitted. Sorry. He's from pitted. I, I got scared for a second. And, uh, there is a front wing know. coming out, though. There is a front oh. wing, so it must have been Rapasa and Jessar because they were fourth and fifth on the road coming together. Yeah, he's getting his wing changed. Sorry, I had to go back to the action. And Anglo is now in the top five for now. And he's right behind Sem. He's been battling Sem for the, the past half a lap and could be trying to get into the top four now. As Nico, right behind in eighth place, who is right behind Zane and honing his position is Zane, but he wants to get past Thiago as well, would be nice, especially if he wants to get closer to the championship leader, but the championship leader, who is behind Enzo, 
I don't think he's, not, he's more worried about himself than Enzo. He's four and a half seconds behind Tico, and this will put him in a great position for this championship with only two more rounds after this. Yeah, it's looking good. A lot of squabbling going on behind Zane, trying to get past Tiago, but has been mugged at the inside of turn 11 by Nico. Did the same thing to Coolman, did Nico a few laps ago, getting up into seventh now. Could be sixth because Tiago seems to be struggling a little bit in that second Williams. Angelo is there. Uh, well, he's flown off in front of them and Thiago continuing to struggle on those tyres. Zane has made up 10 places despite just losing one into 8th place. Coolman, I feel like may have a bit of damage because the pace has really dropped off, but he's still on the back of this yes. train as well. Nico's still on the move though. Is it going to be a move down into turn number one? A little bit of a defensive shape thrown as Angelo and Sam continue to squabble in front of them, but it is Nico up into 6th now. It is. So that's Angelo. Angelo's up into 4th. And I'll tell you what, he's made a, a great comeback for a driver that's pit on lap one after getting damage for his teammate. He's done a very good job and is well back into this race. What insane pace from Angelo. From first, from the top to bottom to top. Uh, not many people can replicate what he's done and he's going to be staying out for an extra lap too. So who knows where he can get to. And how, how far is he going to be from Tico? It's not that far. He's closing in on a podium spot. Zane up the inside of Tiago, but gets it wrong. Hits the barrier, loses it on the exit. And now it's the Red Bull with half a front wing. Yellow flag is out. Hopefully no safety car, but it's another driver making a critical mistake whilst in combat. And that'll be Zane returning to the back of the pack and the pit lane. Wing completely off as Coleman is now battling a FIFA. What is going on here? He's trying to get through and uh, do a Hamilton-esque move, but instead it's Darth that gets through and into seventh place. Tico now has got Coleman. Coleman's losing his position to Lorenzino. Lorenzino gets through on the inside, and now Coleman down into 10th, and with a penalty as well, and he's coming into the pits. Must have damage. Yeah, pace has really dropped off in the last couple of laps from Coleman. I wouldn't be surprised if there is another new McLaren front wing, and yes, we can see it just in the pit lane, so that'll be McLaren in 13th and 14th as Luca Pass will come through. Return to the lead fight, oh. though, Angelo. Now right on the back of Tico... Yes, he is, and he's right behind him. He was thinking of a move outside of Tico. He can't get it. Tico still in the third position and in the podium spot, more importantly. But don't count anyone out at this rate. Anything can change with a safety car or a crash. We don't want to be seeing that, though. We want to be seeing everyone getting through safe and sound. Angelo really itching to get through. He's got to go for it. In the sector, he cuts the inside uh, with two wheels. But he can't get the move. But he really is scaring him. He's actually hitting him in the back. He said, come on, come on, move. And he's actually sliding out of the corner and down the stretch to the grandstands. This is a fantastic battle we've got on our hands here. And Tico holding on with everything he's got is actually losing position to life. But he wants that podium, though. I think he's more concerned about that on the day, what you can win. And uh, this is allowing... The likes of Nico and Sem to catch up, however, so he's got to be careful not to hang around too long before it's too late and everyone catches up to him. So, is Tico going to go for a move? Uh, sorry, Angelo going to go for a move? No. Well, he kind of was, but he was, had the door firmly shut as Lauren Senior goes sliding into the first corner in an attempt to get past Tiago. Tiago fighting back, and it looks like he has held position for now. Angelo's hit Tico about three times in the past three oh, corners. Dear. Goes into the back of him again, going through turn number three, maybe getting a little bit impatient. And Sema and Nico, like you said, right on the back of that Ferrari as well. So uh, as much as Angelo is going to be looking forwards, still going to be using those mirrors to good effect as well. Darth FIFA has now joined the back of this quintet squabbling over that final spot on the podium. Yes, of course. Now Darth FIFA getting involved. Shows how open this podium fight is Nico's round Nico has had no, he just lost the back oh, end sorry just... yeah lost the back end but dropped behind Darth FIFA big mistake Two. from Nico dropping down to seventh and not what he wanted and now he's in seventh as I said and Jeslar is going to try and get through the field once again he needs these points remember because he's fighting life better in this championship and if he keeps going on like this it might be life better runs away with the championship through he goes into the final few corners and it's stuck behind Alan Marciano, Lorenzino and Tiago. We've got up front, that's Alex D'Angelo, really needs to make some moves. Tico comes across the line and Sam is coming into the pits. 
Now, what's the move from Angelo? He goes up the inside. Oh, and that's a slide from Tico. That is surely the third place for Angelo, and it is. He gets through, and now he is 11 seconds, I make it, behind his teammate. But I'm sure he'd be more concerned about trying to catch up to life about first because there's a championship to be fought. Yeah, finally getting through. Once again, it wasn't the cleanest overtake I've ever seen, but does manage to barge his way past the Williams and up into third and leaves Darth FIFA to deal with Tico. Both Williams drivers have been struggling in these wet weather conditions, clearly not as fast as they were in the dry. Nick will be looking to try and get that place back. And then it's Tiago and Lorenzino with that big squabble going on for 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th. But uh, as that's going on, I think Tiago's lost a couple of places by running wide over the curbs, dropping down from 7th into 9th behind Lorenzino and Ale Marciano. Yeah, so far apart for the Williams driver now, Jeslar, who is now in the top 10 after one driver have pitted, is now getting into his groove. In fact, the sim that was pitted, so yes, so Jeslar now in the top 10 right on the outside of Thiago in the grandstand section, but cannot get through, and he nearly hits him going into the penultimate corner, but stays it now. Tico is in. He's come in for the pits. Oh, and he's got a five-second penalty. Quite easy to do in these rainy conditions. And now he's going to be in even more trouble. Jeslar in as well. Jeslar in as well. So that Alpine peeling off into the pits, as Sem did a few laps ago. Ali Marciano getting a bit frustrated underneath the rear wing of Lorenzino. They've dropped Thiago a little bit as well. But four seconds between the two teammates of Nico and Lorenzino. Nico still right on the back of Darth FIFA as well. Absolutely. So we go and see that uh, Nico, who I believe started in... Ninth is now going to be fighting the driver who started 12th. 12th is very impressive performance from Darfifa. Don't forget, Monzinho, he started 13th, he's now in 6th. Uh, but we can't see the same for the likes of Jesler, who's lost 7 spots. <laughs> Sorry, in this whole race, it's not been going well from it at all. As you can see, there are varying different tyres strategies. Uh, of course, the notable one is the back five have the back six, I should say, have pitted in the previous five laps. Now, Anglo is going to be well ahead of Darfifa, who has someone by the name of Nico catching up to him, and still can't find any way through. It seems that is Tiago in the pits to serve. It's in the pits. To wait, didn't he get a penalty? No, I don't believe so. Just a regulation pit stop for oh, Thiago. Yeah. Oh, I do want to. Uh, yeah, it, I want to bring up Luca Ripasso though. Pitted, I think maybe five or six laps ago for a new front wing. Has been absolutely flying. He's only twenty seconds off the lead at this stage. And when Enzo Ooh. comes into the pits, Luca Ripasso is going to be very close, if not potentially ahead of Enzo on much older tyres, albeit. But there will be an obstacle that Enzo has to get round. Absolutely. And Enzo will have to, I mean, probably may have to pit soon, but he isn't showing any signs of slowing down yet. So we'll leave it to down to him when he wants to pit. He wants Alan Marciano in a battle of Lorenzino, but he can't seem to get through for the moment. But he's got a great run out of that turn, and he's going to be challenging for the position, it seems. Is he going to go diving? No, he's not going to go diving in the water for some reason. Can't seem to pull off. So. You'll be fighting for down the street, it seems, for the sixth position against Lorenzino off the kick car. Undercut's looking very powerful, I have to say. Some of these guys further out in front, maybe not aware of how strong the pace is of the drivers that have come into the pits. Ale Marciano doesn't seem to have the straight line speed to get past Lorenzino into turn number one. And look who's cruised up to the back of this pair. It's Luca Ripassa on much fresher tyres. Much pressure is right because he is on seven laps versus the 19 everyone but Darfifa, Nico and Angelo have. He's right behind Alan Marciano right now. It's one temp and he's going for it. Full send through one of the dangerous parts of the track and they touch wheels. This is very dangerous territory but a brilliant move from Luca Rapasa. Has he done it? Yes! Brilliant stuff. 
rarely see that on this track in the wet, but he's pulled it off and made it look like absolute mincemeat. Using the tyre advantage that he's got, possessing it and uh, utilising it very, very nicely. Beautiful stuff. There was a little bit of tyre bang going, in, going on. But, uh, yeah, getting up into seventh. And I think it's going to be sixth any time soon because Lorenzino struggling as much as the Red Bull that the McLaren has just got past. And that's a little bit of a wobble into turn number 11. This could set up the move for Luca Passa. Going to try and swing it around the outside. Might go uh, into a gap that's closing, but manages to force enough of that McLaren alongside to be given some racing room. And into turn number 13, that's a much easier overtake than the one that Luca Passa got in Ale Marciano and continues that charge forward up into sixth place. There'll be another opportunity for Lorenzini, it seems. He's starting to gain on him again. But is he running for him? Indeed, he has. And he remains in seventh place now. With uh, lot, doesn't seem to be much fighting at all, it seems. Uh, Alan Marciano is starting to close up as well. But uh, again, lots of three seconds, six seconds gap. The gap at the top is six seconds. Angelo is catching life out though. That gap has come down by just yes, over a yes. second, 4.2. Now, both drivers, I think, will have to pit again. Uh, well, life belt hasn't pitted, so we'll certainly have to come into the pits unless they are trying an audacious no-stop strategy. I think the uh, the wet tyres will probably wear out enough to make that not a viable option, though. Yeah, but it is a legal strategy in the wet. You, the requirement you, you must use two different compounds is obviously removed. There is no room Lorenzini saying, mistake. Oh, indeed. Lorenzino makes a mistake and now loses the seventh position he once had. But as what I was going to... Loss. Yes, what I was going to earlier, um, there is no rule saying how many pit stops you make, but basically, inadvertently, it's one pit stop in the dry. And Angle has pit. Interesting. Very conservative on the uh, pit lane entry, desperate not to get a penalty. So going for that undercut was 10 seconds off the lead, so you might as well wonder if there'll be any traffic. That's uh, brought a couple of guys behind in as well. Ale Marciano and Lorenzino coming in for the first time this race. Where will Angelo feed out? Comfortably behind Luca Rapassa, Tico and Sem. The other Alpine of Jesla goes through. So a uh, lot of work to do for Angelo to get back on the podium, but does have the tyre offset. That is indeed correct. So... The fry of Angelo coming through to lap 22. He's going to be doing 15 laps on these tyres, it seems, as his teammate starts to continue his charge through the Zandvoort circuit once again. It just seems like this guy cannot be stopped. He's just driving at a very leisurely pace, but he's actually driving at all full guns blazing. 22 laps on these tyres, though. It must be screaming for air as he makes his way round the bank. They're going to come out in some interesting track position. Enzo might come out behind Tico if the Ferrari comes in now, which they don't. Lifebout's going to come out in between the two Alpines, I would imagine. And I think the Haas is peeling off into the pits. Yes, yeah, so we'll see what track position Lifebout's got. Does have the tyre offset, like we said with Angelo, but... Uh, Track position is going to be key, and he's going to have to do a lot of overtaking to get back up into second place. He is indeed. So in comes life out to the pits. Puts on a new set of tyres, and he'll be coming out into the wilderness. And it looks like he's going to be going down to, is that seventh? Possibly sixth. It is, yeah, seventh. Yeah, it's close with Jeslar and Pit Exit, but that second Alpine is just ahead. So, who has Lifeback got to overtake? Jeslar and Sam, Tico, and then Luca Rapassa. Darth FIFA, I imagine, is going to come in again. Came in under the second safety car, I believe. 13 seconds off the lead. Pace is not as good as the cars behind, and they'll be catching that Alpha Tari fairly quickly. Enzo, as well, has to come in, you would imagine. Otherwise, the, uh, the strategy is going to be a very Ferrari-esque strategy decision. Yes, absolutely so. 13 seconds is now the gap at the top. It says Enzo still leading in seemingly dominant fashion, but you've got to remember he's not pitted yet. And whoa, and that's a slide for Darth FIFA. Darth FIFA making a crucial mistake. And now he's going to lose ground. And Luca Passa starting to struggle as well. Actually got quite the shock seeing Darth FIFA in that position. And now this has allowed Tico to try and make a move, but he's not going to make the move. Life bounce round. Oh, life bounce. No, oh, that is a big mistake for life bounce. Life yeah, there was boat. contact. 
What Contact is going between on? Between himself, Jezlar and Angelo going through turn 11 and 12 chicane, trying to go around the outside, ran out of room and just bumped into the side pod of that Alpine and sent him facing the wrong way. Drops four seconds behind Yasir Saki. We'll have to see where Enzo comes out, but that was a big, big mistake as Angelo gets ahead of the Alpine of Jezlar. And the top three now are battling each other and only hurting themselves. Angelo is ahead of Sam. Enzo is now 2.3 seconds after Darth FIFA's mistake. He is on fantastic form today. Darth FIFA is surely going to have to pit. And Darth FIFA has lost the position to Tico. So Tico is now your new race leader. But he has a five second penalty. So this is perfect for Enzo. Enzo just cannot be stopped today. But if there's a safety car that comes out, then this is big trouble. Zane losing positions and I think may have a problem. FIFA now losing a position to Lucre Passa. Passa going to the inside, still holding his dark FIFA going easily at the inside in the next corner. And Enzo actually watching on, seeing what unfolds. And Lucre Passa does get the position held. And that's an incident in sector two. That is Coleman, who's had another spin in the second sector. It's just not been his day. Meanwhile, Tiago and Yasasaki going side by side into the grandstands. And now he's going to have Nico behind him as well for company. And that is Darth FIFA losing position through Enzo at the third place position. And Angelo is going to get through, it seems. I do just want to uh, talk about Angelo as he gets past the Alpine of Sam. You would well. imagine side by side through uh, Tarzan, turn number one, was 10 seconds, nearly 11 seconds behind Enzo when Angelo came into the pits. It was a two lap undercut. It's now just two seconds behind. This race is back on. And Enzo is now back in the net lead as Yasser Saki has another spin and another spin. And Tico now with that penalty, Enzo's back in the net lead. That did not take long, only take him a whole lap. I'm going to catch Tico very quickly, you would imagine. Luca Passa probably fighting for a podium at this stage. Got older tyres than everyone around, apart from Darth Fifa. Anjo gets past Darth Fifa into turn number eight, up into fourth. That should be third very quickly because Luca Passa on nine lap older wet tyres. And his job will be try and hold off the two Alpines that are just at the back of this queue. Then there's a six and a half second gap back to Tiago. Life bouts race has fallen apart, dropped another couple of places after some contact, I believe, with Nico around there. Dropped behind Ale Marcia. Yes, he has. It's starting to get dangerously bad for Lifebout, and this is a great opportunity for Jezlar to take the lead of this championship as well. Angelo too, and Angelo is right behind Luca Rapasa and fighting for that podium spot as Enzo sets the fastest lap. This is just fantastic from Angelo, and now it could be a one-two as Tico tries to get ahead of, uh, tries to hold off Enzo, but Enzo's just way much faster, and Angelo as well, really starting to close that three seconds separating him and the leader, and that's uh, Coleman off again, and Luca Rapasa makes a mistake in the hairpin, as now Enzo is back in the lead. Sem and Jezlar, the two Alpines, trying to tag team Darth Fifa to get up into fifth and sixth place. Next up on their list will be Luca Rapassa, as we've said, trying to find a way through this very tricky middle sector. Obviously very hard to overtake, but we have seen a couple of moves. Coolman picks up another penalty after spinning further and, yes, does retire in the pits. Yasisaki's off. Uh, I believe that's turn three or turn two, sorry. So uh, something's happened there. Disastrous race for the Aston Martin, as it has been for Zane as well, but in the pits three times. Sem, though, right on the back of Darth FIFA. This could be the opportunity to get up into fifth place, into the 11 12 chicane, but uh, opts to stay behind. Interesting. Yeah, he does. So we've got 14 left in this race, uh, four out of the race now. And Sem in the middle of the Darth FIFA and Jeslar in this freeway battle. And now the lead is two seconds. It's becoming extremely dominant here for Enzo. It just seems like there is no stopping the Ferraris tonight. Around the outside into turn number one. Sam and Darth Fifa squabbling. They bang tyres at the apex of Tarzan. Surely with that uh, 10 lap younger tyre, Sam's going to get through. Does out traction the AlphaTauri on exit. Life bout when it oh, rains. Life bout's out. Retiring He's in, retired yeah, from retiring the section. In the pits. Retired in the pits, yeah. Given up, unfortunately. It was looking so good with that contact with Angelo. And I believe it was Jezlar coming back through the field. Oh. Really ruining his day. And Jezlar, speaking of, in a very, very difficult part of the circuit. Wow. To overtake, gets past Darth FIFA. We saw it earlier on with, uh, was it Ale Marciano? 
think so. And speaking of Al Marciano, he's trying to get into ninth place ahead against Thiago. A gap at the top four seconds. And now Tico is uh, playing the defensive game. He's got a five-second penalty. I don't know why he's doing. So there's another retirement as Tico going for the move. No, uh, Angelo, sorry, not getting the move done. That's Jeslar passing his teammate. Must be team orders there as Yasser Saki is now out of the race. So we've got 12 drivers left in this as Tiago and Ali Marciano going side by side. And in Messi. fact, Ali Marciano goes on the grass and Messi overtake indeed. Enzo sets the fastest lap. And now, Lorenzo is going to get uh, take advantage and he's going to go into the points. I think this scrap's going to continue. Lorenzino, big moment coming out of turn 13 into the wall. Front wing damaged as well. Will they come into the pits? No, decides to stay out. Nico gets past Darth FIFA, meanwhile, into turn number one. So uh, at least one of them is doing nicely for themselves. Up into seventh place with the two Alpines in front and on much worse tyres than Nico. So it could be fifth, maybe even four, maybe a podium for Nico looking at this. Got five lap old tyres. Luca Ripas has got 15 lap old tyres. Oh, this is Marciano. getting messy now. Is this that battle for ninth still? It's the battle for ninth, yes. Al Marciano and Thiago still squabbling quite dangerously as well. Meanwhile, in a more civil manner, Nico and Sem fighting for sixth position. As the lead at the top is now six seconds again. So uh, Enzo has basically not lost the net lead all day as Nico goes on the inside of Sem, tries to cover the position and is successful in doing so. Another point to Nico's tally at the moment. Five points for him right now. Nico's flying. I really think they're going to get on the podium here. At least get up into fourth ahead of Luca Ripassa. Tico's pace looks pretty strong at this stage, but that five-second penalty may be the downfall for the Williams. You'd imagine Nico's going to get past Jeslar fairly quickly and then set off after the McLaren. Lorenzino and Thiago continuing to debate 10th and 11th, the final spot. Can't get my peas out. It's final spot in the points, and Lorenzino swings it around the outside of turn 13. Let's get up into 10th place. It's not been a good race for Thiago. Has to be said. Started from fourth, now down in 11th. So we continue on in the mid pack. It is Nico now catching up on the other Alpine uh, of Jeslar. As he makes his way around turn number four. I'm going to be saying turn number four now because, let's be honest, who keeps track of the actual corner names? Um, you know, there's turn seven, which is what Angelo is coming through. And he has a 2.6 second lead, but is 6.6 .6 behind his teammates. As Jeslar are now starting to feel pressure at this rate, with uh, Lightbook getting a no, sh no score, uh, he'll be on 52. Jeslar will then be on 58, 56. Might have to change that. Jeslar's going to be overtaken by Nico, by the way. Yeah, down into the 11-12 chicane. Seen a lot of action here. Big lockup for Nico, but gets through cleanly enough. Jezza doesn't fight it too hard. And that is fifth for Nico now, continuing to march back through this field after that late, late stop for the uh, the new wet tyres. And Angle will gain 10 points at this rate, so he will be the new championship leader by two points. So it's going to go from third to first. Interesting with just a couple of rounds to go. That no, could, sorry, uh, 59 points. 59, I counted it wrong. It's 59. Gains 12, he's on 47, he'd be on 59, and he'd be four points ahead of Jeslar on 55. So, yes, very interesting. The first and third positions will be switching at this rate, and Jeslar, uh, unlucky Jeslar, will be stuck in second place for now. As Nico starts to close up on Luca Rapasa, he's on a fantastic tear through the field and is currently in net fourth position. He could be in the podium spots, but Tico, remember, he has a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane, so we've got to keep note of that as Luca defends with his life that position. He knows it could be a podium, but he's not going to get it. They're side by side down into the third sector. And now they're going to head into the grandstand. Nothing separating the two. And he heads to the corner. Inside for Luca. Outside now for Luca. And Nico trying to find a hole he's got. And he's still banging wheels with them. And it looks like he's not going to get through. Nico is going to keep that position. 
Yeah, Nico's just got so much more grip at this stage. Ten lap younger See, tires, and it was only a matter of time before Luca Pass did get overtaken. The problem is, because he battled so hard, the two Alpines have closed up to the back as well. Luca Pass is going to try and send it around the outside of turn one, though. Gets his braking all wrong. Goes very, very wide. Could allow Jezlar to try and get involved as well. Not particularly smart racing from Luca Pass there, I have to say. Swapping four positions. Darth Fee from very old tires. 24 laps drops behind Ale Marciano. Nico, though, they've caught, he's, well, caught Tika by a second already so far since getting past the McLaren. Off and he gets Lorenzino and Dorothy for coming together in the most dangerous part of the track. Who is going to win out on this battle? A very dangerous move that could have changed the whole race. And Dorothy for staying ahead for the meantime. Great battle between the two in the most dangerous part of the track. The battle's starting to fade away now otherwise. Still looking for a way through. Look at the rear. is almost a slide into the apex. These two scrapping very, very hard. Darth FIFA trying this long, audacious strategy after coming in under the first safety car, which was lap number seven. Se second safety car. Sorry. Oh. Big snap on the exit. They're fighting very, very hard. It's very commendable. I think Darth FIFA is going to have to wave the white flag any time now, though. And does the another lock up for Lorenzini. It's so, so messy. And Darth FIFA's off the road. And, well, that is the end of that scrap. Indeed, and not in the way he wanted it. Uh, but he's still in the top 10. He's 17 seconds ahead of the top 10, so I think he'll be okay as long as he finishes the race. Jezlar now run on the back of Luca Rapassa for fifth and sixth. Luca Rapassa tried something, did really well after coming in early to change the front wing to get back up into what was at one stage third place, but is starting to struggle now on those 19 lap old wet tyres. Got five laps to try and hold off these two Alpines and Ale Marciano on nine lap fresher tyres as well. Could be catching them any time soon. He could be, as that is Luca Rapassa being chased by Jezlar. Jezlar needs this point if he's to go with an Angelo as it stands. Of course, we don't want to see a late race safety car. If that happens, then that could change the entirety of how this race pans out. It looks all good for the meanwhile for Enzo and his teammate who are getting a 1-2 so far. As Chesla right behind Luca Rapasso. This is for fifth position and another point closer to Angelo. He's not going to get the move done. And holds mistake. it together. Oh, a mistake from Luca Passo and it's easy pickings for Jeslar, who's now three points within Angelo, who's now the current championship leader. Went way too late on the brakes into turn 11, locked the rears, drifted through the apex of the corner and then relinquished fifth place. And it's probably going to lose sixth as well to that second Alpine as well. A little bit wide, I think, tapped the barrier going through turn number 14 there for Luca Passa. No damage, of course. We'll send think about an ambitious lunge into turn one. No. Look at Nico, though, continuing to fly. Only a second and a half now off the back of Tico. So should get that podium outright without the need of the penalty being applied to the Williams. Absolutely. So... Yeah, it looks like we're not going to be getting any late race drama. It's just going to be who can keep it together. And 10 seconds, it's a massive gap. Uh, we have rarely seen any dominant track completely. Uh, Lifeboat is not happy with Jeslar, so Jeslar might uh, actually lose second place in this championship as well uh, if he does get a penalty. So just keep watch for that. Uh, actually, well, I, I saw I saw the incident. I saw the incident. They were all very close, Angelo, uh, Lifebout, and Jesla. So uh, there could have been something in it. I didn't quite have the right angle to see if there was any uh, forcing off the road. Jesla certainly went a little bit deep into turn number 11, so I'll have to wait and see what comes of it. Sam, though, still right on the back of Luca Rapassa. Nico closing up to the back of Tico. Ale Marciano catching that pair as well. So Luca Rapassa, despite a really good recovery drive, could end up finishing only eighth in this race. Yeah, he could. It's quite uh, unusual to see that. Meanwhile, Sem is coming up close to Luca Passa, who's starting to really struggle in these conditions with those tyres. He goes round the outside. This could be the opportunity for Sem to get that position back, but no, he can't do it. And stuck in seventh place, as that is... Star FIFA. Star FIFA, oh no! Star FIFA, I said he'd be fine for a podium, but not uh, for a point, but no... He's made a mistake and is now in the back. Uh, Darth FIFA is... Oh, what's he doing? He's trying to 
Retire on track. Well, it's not going to bring it to the safety car. It's too late for that. Uh, and that is an intentional crash. That might also be penalised. Darth FIFA finding himself in hot water. Can't bring out a safety car because, of course, um, safety car can't come out in the final three laps. So Enzo Thankfully will be okay. Because, yeah, I've really enjoyed this race. With the differing tyre ages and tyre offsets, everyone going for different strategies. It's been really, really fun to watch, I have to say. Nico, as we are about to start the, la uh, the penultimate last, the penultimate last, that's not really a word, penultimate <laughs> lap with Enzo. Nico's got within one second of Tico and then at Sem still right on the back of the McLaren. Ali Marciano has joined them as well. So it will be a three car scrap for sixth, seventh, and eighth. But yeah, Darth FIFA tried the long, long stint, didn't work. Tires just gave up at the end, dropping it going through 13 and onto the banking. So that will be the end of his chances now. Enzo has got it completely sewn up now. I cannot see any way that he loses out on this race. Angelo is going to lead this championship as well. It's going to be a Ferrari 1-2. And with that penalty, I think Jesslor might, and I, I say this, might be just one point within the championship lead. It's very close, isn't it? Hovering around five seconds. He gets this fourth place. He'll be in 58 points. One point behind 59, possibly, for Angelo. There's no way he's going to be letting him through his Enzo. He's too far back. Uh, Enzo has just been on fantastic form all day. Angelo's put in a really good recovery drive. And heck, without the, the pit stop he had, he could have been challenging for the win here. The Ferraris have been on an absolute different level tonight. And you know what? They deserve it. It's been fantastic seeing them go around and dominate the entire field tonight. And the others are just fending for themselves, it seems. Nico and Tico. Nico trying to get on the podium. And if he battles too much for Tico, uh, who has got a penalty, so it probably isn't going to be able to make much difference wherever he gets past or not. So it's just probably playing for keeps, it seems. Tico trying to defend his... It's all about his fifth position now. Can he hold on to fourth position with... Jessler hovering around. That's a mistake from Nico, so Tico might not be overtaken. But we're about to close out the race, and we've actually got a battle behind for sixth place as well. So I'll keep tabs on that, but it is all about the two Friars about to claim their prize. Tico's got to be careful. Jessler did actually make a little mistake going into turn number three. Locked up, we've got a yellow flag, and I think that's Ale Marciano. Yes. But the here Red comes the winner. Yeah, it was in the dirty air of Sem and Luca Passa just dropping it. Only loses one place, but Enzo coming round the banking. It is Ferrari on top and in second place as well. Yeah, he's going to take the win and cross the line. Victory for Enzo. Fantastic performance from the driver. And Angelo's going to take the second place and complete a 1-2. And the championship lead as well, celebrating like Fernando Alonso would in the Ferrari. It's going to be... Tico that comes across the line in third, but he will lose that position with that penalty. So it'll be Nico Jessler's that claims the third just. place. And it will be Jesla that gets fourth place and will go within one point of Angelo. Bad night if you're life, but he's lost the championship lead. And my goodness, uh, sixth position goes to Sem. Uh, Sem position goes to Sem, sorry. And that's a fight for the second to last point, And it's going to be Tiago that somehow holds on to get that second that second extra point and unfortunately for Zane he will get no points from that and that will hurt his championship chances massively absolutely it was a, a bit of a mugging going around the penultimate corner from Tiago getting past Ali Marciano right at the death Oh, but it is Scarlett on the top step of the podium. Once again, they're dominating in the championship, aren't they? And they were dominating in the Netherlands. But behind them, Nico with a brilliant drive, we have to say, to third. Excellent, excellent job yes. from Nico. Jesla, courtesy of the penalty for Tico, gets another place there. Up to fourth ahead of the Williams. Luca Passa did well recovering from the... Uh, the front wing loss earlier on finishes just ahead of Sem. Lorenzino, Thiago, and then Ale Marciano rounding out the points-paying positions. Only 11 finishes. Darth FIFA retired late on. 
and we lost Yasisaki. We lost Lifebout, Coolman, Owen, Kaya, and Nick early on. So there's your final result. It is a perfect day if your name is Enzo. He blew the fastest lap out of the water. Actually, Tiago was quite close to it, but he was nowhere near the others when it came to this entire race. He wins with the perfect round 17 points to the board, not 26, says there. Angelo gets a very nice second place after an early setback. He's now in the championship lead. Nico gets the third place. Jeslar now in fourth. And Tico in rounding out the top five. As there is the rest of the grid right there. Alamar Shan of a late spin and only finished 10th down two positions. Bad day for Tiago as well. He manages to lose nine positions. Uh, five, pos five positions, sorry. And Luca Passer gained one spot, but Lifeboat. Failure to finish, retired the car, and oh, I've just been given word from Lifeboat, his brakes failed. Damn, that's uh, not ideal at all. Not ideal at all. So that would have been after the instant that uh, saw him spin around. So yeah, disappointment for Lifeboat and that championship charge has certainly been halted. But I have to say, I said it in the final couple of laps, that was incredibly, incredibly interesting to watch. Strategy was the main part. We saw people on old tires, old tires trying to defend, people going for that uh, overcut, the long first stint, and then pitting late to fly back through the field. Really, really good dynamic. And that was a, a wet race that had a lot of action that wasn't necessarily people binning it. So uh, yeah, thumbs up from myself there, I have to say. Absolutely so. Uh, any last words to go through, I think? Uh, Driver the day's Enzo. Has to be. Yeah, I would give a shout out to Nico as well, though. Pace oh, yes, was really, definitely. really good. Enzo really, now really is impressive. on 35 points. Quite a bit away from the maybe too late for Enzo to catch up now. He's only started four races, including this one this season. And he's got three top four finishes and one DNF to their name on that one. So maybe too late for the chance, chance, challenge for the title, but it will be great uh, evidence to show why he should be competing in the higher tiers. That was a fantastic drive from him today. And he really showed why he deserved it. Lifeboat loses the lead and Angelo now goes from third to first. Uh, Brando finally overtaken in the championship after being absent for the past four rounds due to promotion and will not be eligible to win the championship. You know, I do campaign and they should uh, improve the uh, rules. So if someone gets promoted there, the results are carried down to the next place. But that's not how it works, it seems. Next week, I am very, very excited because it is my favorite circuit it's interlagos that yes. should be an absolute banger yes interlagos some unpredictable weather as well and i believe it's austin to round the season and the game that's going to be really good two good tracks to end the season two very different tracks as well and hopefully everybody can join us for it just to quickly mention the sponsors because uh, the race was so action-packed we didn't quite get the chance. If you head over to GT Omega using the code PSGL at checkout, that gives you 5% discount. And using the same code at Sim Racing Center SRC, that gives you 10% off all of their amazing services. Absolutely. So go check those out. And I would just also like to... Wait, what, why are we going into a, a multiple event? What the hell? Uh, guys, the, this the is... Scenes. What are you doing? Why are we getting another thing? I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mean to close out the session, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, uh, it seems like Tico and Jeslar are going to go out for a little casual drive around the Zandvoort circuit. But I'm going to say uh, thank you all for watching. Two rounds to go. Angelo now needs the title by one point provisionally. Of course, we'll go to the stewards off to see what they had to say. But for now, it's all in the favour of Angelo, the Ferrari driver. But two rounds to go, including Interacles next week and in Austin, the final race of the season on the 29th so we'll be back next week the same time same place and i thank you all for watching and until then uh and they have actually a uh, close session so fair enough uh we will see you very ne next week and i wish you all a very good night from me and t-dub thank you all and see you next hey, week if i can find the symbol there we go see you